Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Hi. How's the new house? Good. Can you come over? Uh, I can't. Are you okay? I am going to die tomorrow. is not tomorrow for me. All right, listen, Amy, I'm really freaking out right now. I feel like you put this idea of dying in my head. Can, can you just call me back? You expecting someone? Hi, Jane. You okay? I just have this feeling I'm going to die tomorrow. But how do you know? I just know. Okay, so you don't know. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I just thought for a second when the lights went out that that was it. She could be right. What? You're worried about catching something? Really bad is gonna happen. I'm ready, I'm ready. She did this, did this, did this. I'm not ready. Maybe it's because I've been watching and consuming movies for my entire life, but at 28, I'm beginning to purposefully seek out the weirdest stuff I can find. Not because I have some self-aggrandizing film palette, but rather to seek out films that potentially push their given genre forwards. Challenging conventional norms, whether it be presentation, narrative, or audience expectations, pushing the boundaries of the norm is how we get newer and more exciting films. Also, it helps to establish what I love about films, original, creative, and horrifying stories. I say all of this as a primer for writer and director Amy Simetz's film She Dies Tomorrow, which is currently streaming on Hulu. A film that I knew early on would more than likely irk general audiences, given its non-conformist nature to said audience's idea of what a thriller should entail. The film begins simply enough. Amy, played by Kate Lynn Scheel, suddenly wakes and believes that she is going to die tomorrow. And the problem is, everyone Amy says this to begins to believe it about themselves as well. As the idea that they will die tomorrow begins to spread like a virus, people begin to act and say things that they normally would not, though now do with the sudden realization that they're going to die. The film's far out concept stems from a real world truth. According to Simetz in an interview she gave as part of Neon Productions press notes for the film, the idea stemmed from her real world predicament of dealing with personal anxiety and found that she was actually spreading panic to others who she was frequently talking about it with. Simetz also apparently financed part of the film with pay from her being cast in Pet Cemetery, according to FilmComment.com. So, clearly this is a personal story and project for her, but does this make for a compelling film? Well, that's a more difficult question to answer. Part of why I claimed earlier that this movie won't be for everyone is because it's very much a film focused on mood and atmosphere rather than a traditional narrative structure. Basically, if you're looking for an A to B narrative with a plethora of answers, this will more than likely not be the film for you. That said, I think Simetz is effective in creating suffocating existential dread with this sensory and melancholic look at death. She Dies Tomorrow is more about capturing how we as people would react to, grapple with, and ultimately let the notion that we are going to die tomorrow define our next courses of action. Would you cry? Would you laugh? Would you confess your deepest and darkest secrets to a loved one? Would you take a life? We see this play out in those who Amy infects, as her friend Jane, played by Jane Addams, visits Amy, an addict, as she is relapsing at the notion that she is dying. After Amy informs Jane that she will die tomorrow, Jane goes home and chalks up Amy's doom and gloom banter to her being on a bender. But then Jane hears muffled voices and whispers and is visited by bright neon lights off screen, just like Amy was. Jane suddenly believing that she will die tomorrow leaves her house and heads to her brother Jason's house, where he's hosting a party for his wife Susan. 
And then Jane tells the guests that she will die tomorrow and the snowball of existential dread will continue to grow. Watching this in COVID times is certainly an experience. The film is less about who these characters are, rather how they react to this news. One couple expresses the reality that their relationship has continued well past its expiration date, while another character divulges her feelings for another, and one ends a life. This examination of how people react to the news of their own mortality is both grim, but also darkly humorous as Simetz provides morbid levity. For instance, two infected people are in the midst of hooking up at the notion that they'll die, until one of them has a moment of clarity and says he should go back to be with his wife. Meanwhile, Amy is researching urns and expressing an interest in her corpse being made into a leather jacket when she dies, stating she'd like to be useful in death. And now for a brief intermission. If you've been enjoying this episode of Daily Horror Habit, please take a moment to subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform or leaving a review on iTunes. And thank you for your continued support, which drives the show's success. And now, without further ado, let's get back to today's horrifying episode. Amy is our protagonist throughout the film, though we jump around to various characters and see how they handle their own spiral. Though it really is Caitlin Scheel who gives the most memorable performance, as we get flashbacks of prior events of her happier memories with a man who will eventually infect her. This is really the knife that is twisted into the wound of the realization that she will die tomorrow, as these flashbacks show a recent but brief time where she was happy. Having a handle on her addiction, buying a house, meeting a guy, and now, seemingly in the blink of an eye, it's all taken from her. We only take these things for granted once they've been taken from us, and we'd wish to have them back for just another moment. If there's one thing She Dies Tomorrow is not, it's a comfort movie. In terms of what genre I would classify this film under, I'd say it's a psychological thriller with a slight cosmic horror element to it, but I do place an extra emphasis on slight. Again, while we never get any concrete answers or traditional horror moments, we do see the entity which visits each person once they become infected. Each infected person is visited by bright flashing neon lights accompanied by muffled voices. And while we never know who the voices belong to or what they are saying, it's clear that the person hearing them recognizes them. This signifies the entity is all knowing of those it visits, knowing their past, present, and future. These brief instances are a creative solution to a small budget that restricts the film from perhaps venturing further down this cosmic well, rather than it's simply peering into it periodically. While She Dies Tomorrow is most certainly not for everyone, as I can see many calling this a weird art house film, and that is true, it is a weird art house film, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it does succeed at its goal. Whether that goal is as fleshed out as it could be is the larger question. In terms of examining our relationship with the finality of death, the film certainly does this in a memorable way. Amy at one point even saying in regards to dying, it's not okay, it just is. I mean, she does periodically listen to Mozart's La Cremosa, which means weeping and tearful in Latin, in case you were wondering just how heavy-handed the dread in this film really is. But in all seriousness, the melancholic atmosphere that Simetz creates really does permeate the character's certainty that they will die, despite no concrete evidence to back up that claim. It really did make me pause and ask myself, how would I deal with the inevitable? Would I continue to waste my time on social media as much as I do? Would I tell that person that I love them? Would I tell my boss what I really think of him? Who knows? But the fact is, you'll ask yourself these questions, and that's a testament to what this weird little film is able to accomplish, despite it being rather one note. So, if you're looking for an example of affecting storytelling with a minuscule budget, give She Dies Tomorrow a shot while it's streaming on Hulu. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.